What's up everyone? My name is Maurice West and today I'm taking on the Slam Studio Challenge. This is the first season. I'm very excited to be doing this challenge. Um, you might know me from tracks like Every Time We Touch with Hardwell and my solo track The Kick. Uh, I feel kind of nervous to do this challenge because uh, I have to finish the track in one hour. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Maybe I'll make something that's even so good that I can play it in my sets. Maybe it's absolute trash. Who knows? One hour, one track, slam, studio challenge. Okay. Um, so let's start. Usually what I do is um, mostly I come up with melodies in my head and um, I record them into my phone. Um, so what happens is all the time, like when I'm on a plane or when I'm in the shower, wherever, I just grab my phone, I record the melody. So that's what happened last week when I was in, uh, in Hong Kong. And I came up with, uh, I think it's this one, this melody, which sounds pretty cool. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I always do. So um, let's just let's just start with that melody. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on, you know, trying to figure out all the all the notes or whatever. So now I have everything that I need basically. So then the next step is to search for a sound. So those are the first two notes. Let's see what sound is the best to uh, to draw it in with. Let's just try that one. So here we go. We have the the piano roll right here. And then I think it went like da 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 da. And then it went something like da 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 da. -da. So let's try and draw that in. Then I went like da 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 da. So that's like a nice way it rolls back into the into the same melody, and then I can loop it. So then we have like a like a bass that we can work from. So it sounds like this. And then this kind of doesn't sound like a like a lead sound, like the biggest sound for your track, because you want to introduce it in a, in a nice way. I feel like the melody is pretty strong already, but let's uh, search for something else. Um, okay, that, that could work. don't like the way that uh, it's it sounds really close so I'll try to open it up and 
And then an effect that I've been using a lot lately is the, the phases, which is actually, actually just a, a phaser. So it moves like back and forth all the time between uh, a filter. And it sounds kind of 80s, kind of kind of old school. Um, so, I, so I really like how the, how the sound is developing right now, but I need to push it out of the speaker some more. So I have stuff like Camel Crusher for that or the Novotech character. And then uh, I hope this is gonna work because usually I just throw the bass guitar preset on there. See, it worked. So then we, then we can finally move on to um, the reverb which is really gonna make it stand out. Uh, I have to turn it off in the in the synth though. So uh, maybe leave the delay on. And then over here I have my my file called or my folder called MW go to stuff, which is basically like all the presets for effects or for like a master chain that I have. So for example, I think I have reverb for leads here and that has two chains, one that is like completely dry and one that has the reverb on there like all the way wet and then I can play with the volume so let's set it to like minus five and what I do is I root it to this layer so that every time the reverb plays uh, or every time the, the melody plays like the reverb gets ducked down so. So, um, and then probably the final step is to EQ it so that later on when I add chords and bass and that kind of stuff, it's not gonna interfere. Um, actually really satisfied with how that is sounding. So I might just start looking for uh, chords underneath this melody and let's just take out the June again because it sounds like it's going to be sort of a 90s 80s kind of style track so and the June is really nice uh, old sounding presets um, let's just first see if we can get a nice arp I think I think that one could be in the same theme let's see or oh, wait let's scrap that let's first do a baseline because actually i want the chords to have of course the same baseline and i think i'll be faster if i have the bass first so let's see if i can get something out of the diva presets bass um let's see wait that's still the thing too long. That sounds weird and I like it. So Then I'm hearing like in my head da, 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 da. Oops. Just copy that. Then it has to do something different the second time it comes around. So let's try to maybe just keep it at the root note so it goes back to F sharp again. And now that I have like a solid bass line for the track, I can actually try to look for the chords. So what I'll do is I'll copy all of the bass notes 
and take away like the the rhythmic ones so that's all of these and then I can press this button and it makes everything longer so I copy that again um, I'm just gonna change it to a different timing so it's gonna do it every because it doesn't necessarily have to match up with the exact timing of the bass because um, right now the bass is going to play a different rhythm and the melody is going to play a different rhythm so it's nice to keep everything like in the same harmonics but like rhythmic wise you can do something totally different so um, let's see what I usually do is from the root note, I add a fifth and I add a third before or like above the 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 root note. So that gets you like instant, really nice chords. Let's see. This is just kind of messing around for now, but you can already hear what it's going to sound like a little. Um. And then it goes back to the to the F sharp chord. Everything together right now is sounding like this. Um, I actually kind of like it. So um, let's think of a way to introduce the that melody because you don't want it like out there from the beginning. So Maybe if you, if you just start with, with something like that, and then also um, what I do normally is I wait. I'll try to go into splice, and then I'll look for a vocal bed. And because I feel like I need something airy, like something bigger so that I can, um, so that it's not just synths and not just like, uh, not just like only synths, but also something that makes it, you know, gives it more room. So I think this could work. It's also in F sharp. So that's, that's kind of nice. I just have to take out the bass because I, there's a lot of bass in there. Then it's it's just already like now it's already building up to something bigger. Um, so maybe we need like a different lead to play the same melody, but maybe I can maybe opening that up, opening the cutoff, and then taking off this uh, phases thing. So first it was. So then I need to automate the cutoff. So um, first it was, I think at 
And then at this part, we'll just throw it open all at once. So you can really hear like the long release and it just, it just asks for something bigger underneath this. So then I'll go to my MW go to stuff folder. And I think there is, there's like this, um, stack of like big super saws that I always use for uh, if I do like a bootleg and I just need like to play a theme in in you know big super saws so let's try if we can throw the melody in there and also do something crazy with the chords um, so it's feeling kind of kind of trancy right now so maybe I'll do something like so that you have like those starter effects to give it a little bit more of an yeah to to make it a little bit more interesting um first what i need to do is copy all of these notes so i can play the bass um so let's put those over there there wait let's just do that later So um, I was thinking Maybe this second stutter, I can speed it up a little bit. Um, missed one there. Um, so now the bass is just like playing that F sharp all the time. So let's just make it do the same thing that it did in the in the build. So that's or in the break. So that's. Um, so then it goes to D, then it moves up to E, I think. then it goes down to C or B, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, then second time it's doing those crazy stutters goes to D again then it goes to C and then it stays at stays at F and now we have to find the chords for that so let's just try the same thing we did in the break put it up like three semitones from the from the root note or five. Okay, so the ending is different and I need to change that. Um, so let's get rid of that and then make those shorter. And then I think we got a pretty nice super saw already. Ending sounds kinda dissonant to be honest so um let's try to find something different i 
let's just scrap all of that and try it again. Okay, let's keep it with that. And then I'll just once again, copy all of that there and throw it on the other layers as well. So there's that first one that we had. Then there's this one to fill up like the the body of the suit. And then there is this one, which is kind of like the fills up the high frequency. And then the last one is just like a click, which is nice for the attack. And then what's still missing, of course, is a nice base underneath there. So um, I'll just use the silent for this one. I know in my custom banks, I have the, the sounds of Kashmir volume one. Uh, I think there's like a big sub. Yeah, that should do it. So I'll just copy the, the base, all the base notes from the from the super saws and um, so I have to get rid of all the top notes. That's all of that. It's a little bit too low. Then I'll throw an EQ on there and then Fat Filter has in the Pro Q this preset called Cut Low Side, which you can drag all the way to the right and then you make sure that everything is in mono, so that's what I want for this bass. And then I'm still missing, like, I didn't do any percussion whatsoever yet, so let's try and find a nice uh, clap underneath there just to make sure that everyone still follows the rhythm. So in here, there's something called drop clap. Let's just use that one and turn the warp off because it makes the sound quality worse. I'll just copy it a bunch of times. There we go. Then what I like to do with my claps is make everything wide. So there's this really basic trick for that. On the simple delay, you turn one to zero, one to like 12 milliseconds, dry wet all the way up. And then I need to take out the lows, boost the highs a little bit there's already a lot of highs in the in the sauce so i still want these to to stand out through the mix um so now we need to work on some transitions between all these parts because up until now we have like three different parts. The first part is just without the melody. Then the 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 like the main melody comes in, and then like everything goes wide. Everything is like big. So um, usually what I do is I get a impact. So there's like just a just a boom sound. Just like a, like it sounds like something hit the floor. Um, so it sounds like this. So for example. From this part to the next, it sounds like. And then also there's this really corny trick that I always do, which is just place a crowd behind your song. Um, <laughs> because like, uh, it just sounds like people are screaming already and that's like, the goal of the tracks that I make usually. So I want people to jump and to scream. So um, why not give them a head start, you know? And then we 
also might need um, the sound that we have here reversed so that you can feel it coming already like you can feel what chord is going to hit so you're not going to be surprised by it so let's turn off the reverb on this one and record it here uh, there we go so just need the first note then we're going to take this reverb put it on there make it long so that I have enough room to play with. Freeze it and then I copy all of that audio or wait, let's maybe try that on a different sound as well. So I'll leave the audio there and then I, I reverse it. There we go. So that's a really nice effect just to introduce new sounds. So um, this is what it's going to sound like. And then maybe let's also try that for the for that lead sound. So I will make another track and record the first note. Turn off the reverb first. Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So then once again, I'll throw the same reverb that I just used for the other sound on here. And freeze it, bounce it, and copy all of that. Now I can throw both of those away and just cut off this part. So then that is going to sound like this. So let's, let's just see what we have for now. And then somehow I just feel like maybe this melody will sound nicer if it's pitched up. Um, it's gonna, this is going to feel really weird, but um, I'm just going to put a plus one on everything. And because I just feel like working in G right now, also for the drop, because um, let me see. Oh, that doesn't need that. Okay. Also, pitch this thing up. Boom. And that's the last thing. Let's try that again. And I don't know why, but I just felt like doing that. And now it sounds, I think it sounds way more epic in some way. Like usually when I work on ideas, I just 
sometimes bounce the song and pitch the whole thing up, like just the audio, and then just try to figure out um, what's the best key for the whole song. So now we have like a pretty decent break to work with. Maybe let's try uh, a drop. Then I'll just go looking for kicks in G. Um, that could work. I really don't like the the attack of that kick though, so maybe try punchy kick. That one. What I usually do is just morph these two kicks together and see what it sounds like. And then also to fatten up the bass, I use R bass from Waves. And before I use that, or before I can use that, I have to go into an EQ and see what frequency the G is at. So that is 49, 49 hertz. So then I go back to the R bass, 49 hertz. It's kind of nice already. Um, and then maybe also it needs a bit of a gentle squeeze is what it sounds like, okay. And then also again, to make sure everything is in mono, I'll throw on the cut low side thing. There we go. And then I think for the drop, the melody that I just worked on in the break, could also work in a drop. Um, so let's try, I don't have a lot of time, so let's maybe just try to work on, work with one lead. So I have this thing here, it's called, wait, it's called bleep lead. It's a really simple sounding thing. So. Um, let's see what the melody sounds like. with this one I can also give like that mammoth effect like the notes flowing into to each other so maybe I can try to make them overlap like this Once again here, and then kind of like that. So let's just try and fill up that drop with like effects and stuff because right now. It's gonna sound really empty. Yeah, first note is way too long, by the way. Um, let's see what we can do here with that same crowd that I just used. So we'll go to crowd. There's one I have in that same folder with sidechain on it, so I can just throw it in any drop. And then also in the go to folder, I have something that's called a drop noise, which is basically just white noise um, playing with a with a sidechain on it. So. That's what that sounds like. So I'll throw that in the effects folder just to keep everything like nice and organized. And put the volume down. And I 
can put these claps right here. Just needs a little less volume. Then I can already hear like a rhythm in between the drop. So let's try and get like uh, like a tom in there. Um, I think I I think I stole this tom once from another track. Um, and I think maybe yeah, there's still a lot of low in it because I just I just ripped it out of another track, which is like usually not what I would do and not what I would recommend but sometimes if you hear a sound that you really like you just go for it so this is the rhythm I'll just crank up the volume here So that's kind of okay for a drop. Maybe we could try to do a build up in between. I just feel like the 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 build up would have to be twice as long as normal because um, there's just the same melody all over. So maybe like the people, like the listeners, need a bit of a break from hearing the same thing all the time. So. could get like a basic snare pattern in there I actually have all the snares from the track I did rhythm of the night so this is the build-up snare and I can just put that over here I'll make it go all the way up until there and then usually it's just like four to the floor snare until the second part so And then for the last part, to make people ready for the drop, you don't want like those chords anymore, you just want that first chord, so... And then make them repeat even faster. Maybe this one needs to be like one octave higher to give it more energy. Uh, let's see, what should I do now? You could try to do like little edits of the the synth I have in the break. And then you want to of course introduce the drop melody before it starts playing or like that's what you usually want to do. So I'll just put it in the build up with a filter over it so that like you get a taste of what's going to happen but you don't know what what the full thing is going to be like yet. So let's put it on here. <laughs> automated so that it goes up and 
then on the drop, of course, it's going to be off. So let's also throw in that boom effect again here. turning up the volumes on everything a little bit so that now I can do a trick that I always do before the drop I go on the master channel and I put a utility here so that I can just make the volume go down like two two decibels and that just that's just something that's all in your head you know you won't notice the volume going down but once the drop comes back in it's going to be all the way up again so that kind of like it's uh <laughs> it's like the same trick i do with the crowd like it's it's really cheesy or it's really like an easy trick to do but it just works and then also what i do is like the same kind of thing is i make the the width like of the whole track i make it go until 50 percent so if you normally listen to the track it's going to be 100 percent of course and right before the drop it's 50 so when the when the drop hits, once again, it's gonna be like uh, all the way wide. So that just makes it feel in your head like, like the drop is way bigger than the rest of the track. And then still, I feel like the the bass from the break also needs to play here. What I also did while the track was playing, I put on a filter on the also on the master channel to um, that takes away all the low frequencies right before the drop hits. So that's like three things that I just did to make the drop hit harder um, when it gets out of the when it comes out of the buildup. So now I'll just add a couple of effects things right before the drop. So I make the bass go away in the second part. So now I need another bass to fill it up and I think it would be nice if that's just just a simple bass that that goes up so that's in G one note I pitch bend it all the way up and let's see set the pitch bend range to 24 so now it's gonna sound like this And I need just the lows, I don't want like the, the high part, like the gritty sounding part, so just and we'll of course need some sweeps, some white noise, like stuff moving up. Um so I have this pack, it's called best sample pack ever. I have no idea how I got this one, but it just has a lot of good stuff in there, so. And then I also have this thing always ready called the the 
square riser and that's just something I used in another track and I just put in here put it in the right key and then it's good to go so I'll put it in G right now and take off the sidechain <laughs> And then of course like there's an empty part right before the drop right now which sounds really really whack so we need something to fill that up and normally what i would do is like i would get or i would record my own voice and do something crazy and just process the hell out of that and then um use that before the drop but right now we'll go for something that's way less original and just go into the drop vocals the drop vocals folder and just get one of these just because it works. Like if I want to play something live as well, I don't have the time, I will just go and get a drop vocal from some someone else, from some other track, like I'm doing now, so. So that's kind of coming together. Um, I think this one also needs a snare that I always use. It's called, it's like a, like a snare with a lot of bass in there. So that's also nice to have right before the drop because I took away all the bass. I think it's here. That one. And then I still kind of feel like it's a little bit empty in the drop because you have those two notes that da, da, and then after that there's just just calls for for some other sound. So maybe um, maybe let's try like a brass thing or or an acid thing. Three o three. Let's see. Our track is in G, so of course we need something that's also in that same key. Maybe that one. That one's kind of nicer because it just has more like grittiness, more low. Then let's make the first one a bit shorter. And then what I do is we can we can distort the hell out of it and put reverb on it so that like it's a nice thing in between the lead. So you'll have Then I can maybe just take the same reverb that I took from the lead. Let's see. And of course I have to root it again to this sound because right now it's not so. And then it needs sidechain just to be sure. And for that second part, we need something like 
again, something different to happen. So maybe we can try the lead in the way that it was in there before, so lower. And of course we need more percussion. We need like a, like a ride, something to, which is also like a wide sound, so we can open it up more. Uh, let's see. Let's just do that one. Then let's copy this a hundred times. Boom. There we go. Um, so I also think the second part of the drop needs something extra in the percussion. So I was thinking of like a group of people saying, Hey, and just like repeating that on the beat. So it kind of like you keep, you keep going on the beat, you know? So, but I feel like this sample just needs to be a little bit shorter to fit. So let's try this. And then let's just put it in between every kick. And then we copy paste it again. And then maybe for the last part, let's make the lead go up again. Maybe we can also do some nice like tweaks on the lead where it like stutters or does some crazy stuff. like an extra note in between like anything could work but you just have to keep it interesting for for the people listening because also with this track as i said there's a lot of the same melody all the time <laughs> have the time to work on like a second break and a second drop or whatever, I would start from there, just like go out of the drop, have that moment of like, um, yeah, just give it a rest for a moment and then you can like start a new melody, start something fresh, so. And then like anything new could happen. Um, so let's see what's still missing here. Uh, maybe in this fill we need something to happen with the lead as well before it moves back into into the into the drop so I've got this plugin that's basically just a, a flanger which is also on like the DJ e equipment and it makes her sound go like this <laughs> It has a bunch of presets, so I can... Kind of sounds like guitar now, which is nice. Like it switches up the sound for, uh, for those few seconds. And then there's this trick that I do when I don't want to mess with the, with the dry wet button inside a, inside a plugin itself. It's a lot of stuff that's going to look weird, but it's just, I make another chain and that one is dry. And then I, I tell like Ableton here that this, like this is all the way faded to the, to the left and this one to the right. So 
they're never gonna play the same thing at the same time. And then there's this automation I can do here with this button so I can switch the this sign in between those two, uh, two lines and I map it to this button. So now I can play I made my own uh, dry wet button basically for the plugin. So now I have a really easy easy button here that I can automate it with. So I can make it, for example, go up and then down again. And then while doing that, I might throw a simple Ableton filter on there that takes away the low frequencies at the same time. So it goes up. That will make the fill sound like this. And then for the last part, I'm just going to change this note and let's see where is it because i feel like you can't do the same thing over and over again so um let's see i think i'm kind of satisfied with what i have right now so maybe I'm just gonna call it a day and uh, yeah, let's first just hear what I have. Done. Kind of like it. So I think right now um, I'm out of time, but I'm actually pretty satisfied with the with the with the stuff that I put in here for for this hour. Um, I think it's kind of nice actually that Slam pushed me to to make a track in one hour because usually I would take like a whole day to work on a track and then it would still not be finished and I would spend like a week and whatever. But right now you're you're just pushed creatively, you know, to to just throw something on your computer, throw it out there and um, and make music. So it's kind of nice that they do that and push like all different artists. And um, I'm actually kind of happy with the with the result right now. And I like I like the idea so much. I might even turn it into a real track and like test it out live. So, um, yeah, let's see what happens. So I just finished the Slam Studio Challenge. It was a lot of fun. It was kind of 
you know, it was kind of challenging, it was kind of hard. Um, but of course, that's what challenges are for. They're meant to push you. Subscribe to this channel. Also subscribe to Slam's Instagram to follow all the updates. And um, this was Maurice West for the Slam Studio Challenge. Peace out. The Slam Studio Challenge.